Hello, my name is David. Welcome to my first Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today we'll be creating an advanced third-person camera system. We start out with a third-person template that comes with Unreal Engine 4. And it's a pretty cool thing. Um, it's got a lot of functionality we can use right away. But uh, one thing I don't like about it, see if I don't touch the mouse or if I'm using a gamepad, the right thumbstick, uh, the camera will never move so I have to do that manually um, and first thing we want to do is implement a button that we can press so that the look at uh, that the camera gets reset behind the player so that you always get a good view if you need it quickly and this is kind of a warm-up exercise um, pretty easy to do but has a lot of the concepts we need in it. Second thing we want to do is um, create a camera that automatically tracks the movement of the player. Uh, you may know that from one game or another from the old Zelda titles like Ocarina of Time to uh, Dark Souls. Many games use this camera system. When you walk directly towards the camera nothing happens. Um, but when you start running at an angle camera automatically tracks the movement of the player and uh, I think it's a pretty nice system because you really don't have to do much most of the time you can always get a good view of the player and uh, the world so let's get started first thing you want to do is create a new project and we'll be using the template third person blueprint give it a fancy name down here click create project already done this so I just close it and uh, you'll be presented with your brand new project that uh, really doesn't have much in it first thing we want to do is go to edit up here and to the project settings and over to input because we want to define our key that will be used to reset the camera um, here at action mappings there's already jump because we can jump we want to at an action. So let's call it, I don't know, reset camera. And if you open it, you can define a key. Let's use the middle mouse button. And uh, because we support gamepads, we want to have way down here gamepad right thumbstick. Great. Okay, now we have these buttons bound to our custom reset camera event. Next thing we want to do is um, in our content browser go to blueprints and open the my character blueprint that has automatically been created for us. Okay, you see this uh, network of nodes. I don't know if you have any experience with blueprint. Um, in short, it's Unreal's visual scripting language. If you have used Unreal Engine 3 or UDK, um, it replaces Kismet and it can do a lot of more. Lot more stuff. Um, I'm not gonna bore you with the details of this. It's pretty easy to understand. You can, if if you survive this tutorial, you can easily understand everything that's going on here. So no problem. Um, one thing we want to look at is the movement input because we'll directly use that. So there are two events: um, input axis move forward and move right and they have an axis value so that means if you move forward the event will fire and the axis value will be 1 if you move backwards it will be minus 1 same applies for right so right is axis value of 1 moving left is an axis value of minus 1 and um, in order to move we get to apply a vector in world coordinates so we gotta give it a world direction in which to move and we can take the scale value directly from the axis which is actually a bit unfair because you can walk faster with a keyboard than with a gamepad um, to get the vector we want to move in we have to get the control rotation from the pawn right here the control rotation in our case is basically the direction the camera is facing and um, we need to break that rotation into its components. So pitch is when you when you're looking up and down, that's pitch. Yaw is looking left and right, and roll is when you yeah, roll over. Um, 
and we are only interested in the yaw like it says in the comment because we only move on a plane we are only interested in left and right movement or looking direction um, we got the brake rod and make rod so brake rotation and make rotation nodes here that help us to um, break a rotation in its components and make a rotation from components and we just zero out pitch and roll that's it nothing fancy from this rotator that we get we can with these simple nodes get the forward vector and the right vector and uh, yeah that's it that is the world direction we are moving in when we are firing these events so let's see we want to have a button that um, resets the camera. So we have added our custom event, name was reset camera. Let's add this first. Okay. When this button is pressed, we want to do something. We already know this stuff is called control rotation. Um, there's only get control rotation on the pawn. It's a little tricky here. You have to disable context sensitive because it only shows us stuff that can be used directly on the pawn itself but the pawn has a controller that controls it and we can only set the control rotation on the controller so target is controller it says it here um, get controller great we can call get controller on a pawn so I am a pawn target self is totally okay and we can just get the controller from the pawn no problem there so we can now set a rotation. Where do we get the rotation from? Um, cannot use that stuff from up here because that is the direction that the camera is facing, as I said. And we want to set it to the direction the mesh is facing. So the, the actor. Um, that's it. You can just. You should reactivate context sensitive because it's a lot of stuff here that has to do with meshes. Um, you can go get mesh on a character and because we are moving a character no problem there so for starters um, let's just get the rotation get what's it called um, well let, let's do it another way you can drag from the mesh right over here and if context sensitive is activated you can um, it only shows you the nodes that make sense. So the functions that can be called on the mesh or, I don't know, the variables that belong to the mesh, whatever. And let's call, let's type rot. And you can see we can get the world rotation. That sounds pretty good. Okay. Let's just directly connect that, the return value. So we'll set the rotation of the camera to the rotation of the mesh. Let's just quickly try that out. So if I, I turn around the camera and press the button, well, something happens. Not exactly what we want, but uh, something happens. So it seems the mesh is rotated for some reason or, or another. Um, it's not nothing to worry. We can account for that with stuff we already know. So let's break that link. You can alt click on it and um, just type break rod because you know the yaw was turned by 90 degree in, in some direction counterclockwise I think. And um, we gotta account for that. Let's make a new rotation. Let's take pitch and roll directly and um, find the float plus float node because we got the yaw that comes in here and we want to add 90 degree um, could work depending on the orientation Unre is using I don't know so let's connect that check it out so when I turn oh nice okay so the camera is always positioned behind the character but it also changes its pitch so if I look down here I would expect the camera to look 
up to the character from behind. Instead, it always gets centered directly behind the character. Um, if you're happy with that, that's cool. I'm not, so we're gonna change that. Um, first, we need to get the rotation of the camera so we can find out its pitch. Uh, we saw that over here, get control rotation, control C and control V. Now let's uh, use the same break rotation thing. And let's use the pitch that we got from the camera. And for completeness, let's also use the roll. So the camera isn't rolling around, but anyway, maybe sometime in the future, your game design can always change. Save that, compile, move it out of the way. And let's try that out using a gamepad now. Great. So if I look up the character, it works. And uh, it always keeps the pitch and just resets the yaw. Okay, great. That wasn't too hard. So let's select all that, type Z, and uh, write a comment like reset camera angle or something. I don't care. Move this over a bit. Okay, nice. Now it gets a bit more complicated. Next thing we want to do is adjust the camera to always be behind the player. We could directly set the control rotation. Um, what I like to do is, you can see that over here, when you move the mouse, um, there is a node add controller yaw input. And that's really all we want to do. So I'll just copy that node and start with that. Um, now there's a lot of ways you could do this. Um, I'll just update in every tick because it gives me the delta seconds, which is nice, so I can scale it to the frame rate. Um, that's pretty cool. Now, obviously there's some parameters that are gonna affect the speed with which our camera is adjusting. It's um, the delta seconds, so the time between the two frames, uh, or this frame and the last frame, or whatever. Um, then there's the movement speed of the character, so when you move slowly with a gamepad you can do that. Then I don't want the camera to adjust as fast as when he's running like hell. So I wanna, yeah, keep that a bit lower. So I'll use the multiply float by float thing and um, Oh no, I'm not gonna do that. <coughs> Let's start with, with assembling or everything that has an influence on the amount of yaw. So, first thing that we obviously need to do is uh, find the angle between the vector of movement or, or the direction of movement and the direction the camera is facing because when we're walking in the direction that the camera is facing, we don't want the camera to change. Okay, so let's first get the movement vector. That's pretty cool because we already got that up here. You can just copy that. Okay, that worked. <clears throat> so this gives you the forward and the right vector. Um, cool thing we can do now. You remember the events that were over here? Actually, um, it's pretty useless to, to use these events because these events are firing every frame. Because um, the axis value, if it's zero, it doesn't matter, event fires. So move forward and move right. Um, we don't need to use these events. We can just type move forward and get the axis value directly. Uh, same for move right. Okay, now we just have the axis values without the events that we actually don't need. Okay, great. 
Now we have a forward vector and the right vector. If we scale that, um, so multiply, what do we have here? Uh, multiply vector by float. And we have a, let's move that a bit out of the way. You can uh, scale the forward vector to the axis. So if you don't press the forward button or the, the backwards button or don't touch your, your left thumbstick, um, this value will be zero and the forward vector don't, won't have any influence. Um, okay, great. Same thing here. And then we just have to add these two vectors together. So type vector plus vector and connect these two together. Now we have one vector that gives us the movement direction. So, I don't know, you can comment that here. And let's keep it tidy. So select all that, um, press C, like comment, and then type something like get the vector of movement in world coordinates. So, we now know what that block does and uh, hopefully can rely on that that it's working. Okay, now um, we need to compare that to the direction our camera is facing. We can get the control rotation. We already know that, so that is the direction the camera is facing. Um, no problem. And now we have a rotator. And here we have a vector, which is a slight problem. So we need to get a rotator from that vector because this is really the direction vector, um, like x, y, z components that is pointing in the direction we are moving. Um, but what we want to have is a rotator again, so a thing that consists of a pitch, yaw, and roll. And that's a cool function called rotation from x vector. Create a rotator which orients x along the supplied direction vector. Huh. That's exactly what we need. So we get these two rotations and uh, type rot delta or something. Oh, yeah, delta rotator. Great. That's exactly what we need. So we'll get the delta between these two rotations. This is what we want um, because we just want to adjust the yaw of the camera and not you know the, the delta in pitch and the delta in roll if it weren't zero for both um, is not of interest to us so we need to break the rotation again and now we can get only the yaw difference which um, yeah which is a pretty important thing that we use later on to um, control the camera adjustment. So let's let's quickly check that out, compile, and uh, see what it does. So it's checking when I run towards the camera. It's pretty much okay when I run to the sides. Uh, you know, the more I want run towards the camera, the more it freaks out. And when I run directly towards the camera, it seems to go near infinity somewhere. Or it doesn't look too pretty. But um, we've been missing some things. So what we wanted to, ooh, and it adjusts automatically still when we are not moving to some direction. So let's see what's going on here. Um, First thing we want to do is when the character is standing still, we don't want to do any movement at all. So we need, let's quickly break that stuff. Um, we need to get the length of the input vector. Um, we, we'll do a small cheat here. So, uh, sorry, we'll get the move forward value again 
and the move right value. So these are the two um, axis values from the keys we pressed. Um, because it doesn't really matter if we in, w in which direction we run, we're just interested in the length of the vector. Let's use an absolute node. So negative values become positive too. And now we have two absolute values that are either zero if the key is not pressed or greater than zero if the key is pressed or the thumbstick is moved slightly in that direction. Let's, um, let's add these together. And uh, what we want to do is um, use a clamp node. No, not clamp int, I'm sorry. Use a clamp float because we want to clamp that value to be between 0 and 1 because lower than 0 it can't happen, okay, that's not a problem but if both are pressed um, then you don't want to have yeah, you, you can't move faster than 1 so let's add that here uh, what this does is um, yeah, get the length of the input vector pretty much okay um, what I would like to do is, is separate the the yaw down here from our multiplicator over here um, so at another oops, multiply float by float I want to multiply the yaw with some value um, and, and add the yaw over here. This value that the yaw is multiplied with, I'm again going to clamp it because um, value lower than zero doesn't make any sense because we don't want to move in the opposite direction. And again, a value bigger than one doesn't make sense because, because we move the camera too far and end up with stuff we don't want. So let's try that out again. That looks a lot better when we stand still nothing happens. When we run towards the camera it's still jagging and it's still moving pretty fast. Yeah, it's going faster the closer our direction is to the camera which is actually not what we want because we want um, the camera to not adjust at all when we run directly towards it and yeah it doesn't really adjust but it seems to seems it can't decide what to do really so now comes the the part where you could use some mathematics don't be afraid it's not much what we want to do is we already have the vector of movement direction. Um, you may have heard of a thing called dot product. The dot product is a pretty handy tool because you can get the dot product between two vectors and um, when they are perpendicular the result of them is zero and when they are um, pointing in the same direction then uh, the value is yeah, the sum of norms, uh, the, the product of norm, absolute norms, something. Um, we're going to normalize our vectors. Um, and that's actually a good thing we could do here. Normalize our vector. So, and then we can use that. Um, so we we can. I think we have a value of 1 when we're pointing in the same direction so character is moving away from the camera or directly towards the camera we have a value of 0 when we move perpendicular to the camera which will come in handy later so first let's get the rotation of the camera again we again we want a vector that's pointing in the direction of the camera or the direction the camera is viewing yaw only. That means uh, we are again going to um, ignore the pitch and roll values. 
So, get control rotation, you should know that by now. We're going to break the rotation and we're going to use the yaw to make a rotation. Ah, yeah, connected to the pitch, thank you. Okay, now we have a rotation from the camera. So, you already know the get forward vector node. Uh, which will help us to just get a forward vector from this rotator we just created. That's basically everything we need. Um, let's comment it again. I'll get a vector of direction the camera is facing. Your only. It's important. Okay. Now we have these two vectors. We have. Uh, actually, let's normalize that. Do we need to normalize that? I think we can get f get forward vector should return a normalized. Hmm. I don't tell, but I just assume it's normalized. Whatever. So let's calculate the dot product, which you can find by typing dot product. Okay. Uh, now we got the dot product. Um, you know the the dot product can become negative. What is happening? Uh, so we'll take the absolute value again. And actually, what we want to do is we want to have a value of one when the character is walking perpendicular, and we want to have a value of zero when the character is walking directly towards or in the direction the camera is facing. So it's exactly. Um, yeah, the opposite of what the dot product gives us, but let's just let's just use a minus node and kind of calculate one minus the absolute result of the dot product. Okay, what we want to do now is add a pin down here and uh, connect that up. Oops, sorry. So we have three things contributing to our factor. It's delta seconds, it's length of the input vector, so that when we are standing still, nothing happens. And it's the dot product of the, between um, the camera and the movement vector. Let's compile that, try it out. That already looks pretty cool. Okay, great. Two things I would like to add to make this thing a bit more customizable. Um, first thing is, you see, this um, this dot product provides a value between zero and one, and um, what you could do is the power node here. So use this as base and then you can uh, provide an exponent here so I don't know let's do something like um, let's exaggerate a bit 5 see what it does so with this with this exponent you can control how much influence the direction has so when you walk directly left or right the value um, will always be 1, so the result of the dot product. And when you walk towards or away from the camera, it will always be 0. But if you walk at an angle, this exponent can control how much influence um, it has. So 5 results in only left and right really having an effect, and every other direction is pretty much ruled out. If you pro provide a value um, smaller than than one, you can achieve another effect so that it turns faster um, when your angle is, yeah, even when your angle is not directly to the side. What we want to do is um, use this exponent and promote it to a variable. 
uh, let's call it, I don't know, um, uh, da, 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 angle exponent. Let's make it public, um, give it a tooltip, exponent that controls the influence of the angle, whatever. Um, and you can choose a category like camera auto adjustment. Okay, great. Um, second parameter I'd like to add is just an overall factor. To promote it to variable again. Ah, let's call that um, camera rotation rate. Um, overall control factor for the camera rotation or camera auto adjustment rotation rotation okay that's the category again great so when you now go to the defaults of your pawn you will see that the camera rotation rate um, I like to set this to 0.6 or something and the angle exponent to 0.5. You can play around with these values. Um, they're pretty useful so when you have a, a game designer that wants to tweak that stuff quickly or you are a game designer yourself who wants to tweak that stuff quickly you can do it here directly by these, by these variables we provided. Okay so let's take the whole thing and uh, comment it again. Let's call it uh, camera auto adjustment. Save, compile, see if everything works correctly. Okay, camera is adjusting. I can reset this stuff. And uh, then you're done. Okay, thanks for your time. Have fun. I hope you learned something. And uh, have a nice day.